Hey, hey, American Princess fans, we got Broadway's best Rory O'Malley in the house as Brian. Stay right there. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz Hello, 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 AfterBuzzers. Thank you so much for joining us back here for American Princess, the after show. I am your moderator and host, Carla Renata, and joining me are... Kelsey Hightower. What's up, guys? Haley J. Taylor Gates. And y'all, y'all, I'm just way too excited for this show today. You think they're we, ready, Carla? I, I, look, they gonna have to be ready. It's now or never, because, you know, we got our boy, Brian, a.k.a. Rory O'Malley, in the house. Yay! Hello, lady. <laughs> Huzzah. Hello. Huzzah. 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 For the tip <laughs> We are so so excited to have you here. We love this show so much, and we particularly love you. Thank you so yes. much. Your support of the show means so much to me and to everyone who's worked on it. So thank you. Thank oh. you. You're getting the word out to so more people are watching the show, and it really means a lot to us. Oh, you guys deserve it, so especially good. if you're saying everyone that we've talked to is so nice. Obviously, you included, and yes. we're excited to dive in deeper and get to know all the secrets. Of course, <laughs> I have all of the secrets. Oh, so let's start I with your casting. He's like, not really. <laughs> so let's start with your casting. Yeah. How did you? How how did American Princess come to you? How did the role of Brian come to you? And and how did you decide how you were going to craft him to play out on the series? Well, I got the script uh, during a pilot season, you know, which is always like, you know, who knows what kind of material you're going to get. And when I got this, I was like, oh my god, I love it. This character is amazing. This is so much, such a fun world to be a part of. And with Jenji Cohan being an executive producer and Jamie Denbo, our showrunner and, and, and creator of this show, she's so funny. And I was such a big fan of Ronda and Beverly, that, that the podcast, and knew she was a brilliant comedian. So I knew I wanted to be a part of it. I auditioned for it. And uh, luckily, I've done a bunch of Shakespeare in the past, and it, like, came into use like oh, I, yeah. you know like, i love i've gotten to be a part of theatrical productions of shakespeare i did comedy of airs at the old globe a couple of years ago down in san diego and i love it i love it so much but i never thought i'd get to do it on tv and you know getting to go to an audition where you do shakespeare as a part of the audition that's a dream in itself, whether Talk you get the job or not. about mixing best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, got to audition in front of in front of Jamie and and Genji, and I think that Jamie had just seen me play King George the Third in Hamilton at the Pantages here in Los Angeles. So I'm pretty sure that she was like, "Oh yeah, he could be Shakespeare. That's pretty, you know, <laughs> different century, but you know, like he can be the uh, the, uh, the the English historical figure." at the fair um and I, it i i got the part and i was just so excited and and finding out i think i was a part of the show early on jamie tells me i was the first person that was cast i don't know if that's mm. totally true but well now aren't you special when you know, i you know. know listen listen i that is not the case usually so i you know when you're this pasty white they know <laughs> that's usually that's how i book it they're like we're not gonna find not. anyone pastier than this guy relate. no <laughs> way white. That's that's how I get jobs, and that's uh, you know it's just a lot of SPF 100. It keeps me. Gotta working. protect that I skin. I understand that. Yes. <laughs> I was watching one of your other interviews, and you were talking about uh, when you got cast that you might have only had like 12 lines or yeah. a very short amount of um, speaking time. Right. And watching the series, you've become a main character and such a huge story arc. Did you expect this? Like, did you see this coming with um, all the ensemble casting no, and everything like that? I or? did not. No. Really? I, well, this okay. is what I will say is that I signed on to do the show with the dozen lines that I had because they were a dozen amazing lines. I loved every <laughs> bit of the, the script, and I was like, I'm happy to come to this party, right? Yeah. But I also knew that just like with every other show, Gen G does orange is the new black or glow that there is not one wasted human being or character on that screen not one so it might not be your episode but there is a reason that you're a part of this story it's not going to go to waste. So I, I was that. just felt like... I'm sorry. I think I, I got goosebumps. I'm like, having oh, it's true, coming though. down you my cheek. You know it's true. Like I'm it to life. That's, that's, that in itself is a really huge benchmark for a showrunner because most showrunners or most shows, and you know this, mm. most shows that you're on, they'll call everybody in 
and you're like glorified background at best. Right. So the fact that you said that about Genji and Jamie speaks volumes to their character yeah. and the way that they run a show. Yeah, I, I would say I knew that there was going to be a, a care for this character and that there was going to be an arc and something important. And I didn't I had no idea. It's not like they said, oh, this is where your character's going to go. Mm -hmm. I got that second script and I was like, whoa, I, I have a few scenes in this that are, that are really beautiful. Oh my gosh, well, I'm glad I got a, a, an episode where I get to, it's, it turns out it was the second one. And then I get the third one and all of a sudden I'm going through this crisis of, you know, what it means to be a Shakespeare performer and not wanting to be crude. And then I have a love interest. I, I, I mean, I can't tell you what it means to me as a gay man to be playing a gay man, which I've done many times, but I've never ever had a love interest that was genuine and true and not the butt of a joke it was it was real and i know what that would mean to me as a viewer as an audience member so you can only imagine what it meant to me as the actor getting to show up and and read these words and absolutely and that's real right now because um we were talking before we got on the air about billy porter yeah and billy porter is nominated for an emmy for pose on fx and i saw an interview with him where he was talking about he basically was reading people for not casting people that are actually LGBTQ in LGBTQ roles. Mm -hmm. And he kind of let folk have it. I was like, oh. I was like well, Billy? Well, really? I know, it was I'm shocking. shocked. It was shocking. I know, it was just absolutely shocking. But he was reading people, so I'm glad to hear you say that you had an opportunity to play those types of roles before because I really, he was right. You know, a lot of times, you see disabled, pe disabled people being played by by people that aren't sure. disabled. You see straight people playing gay roles. You see <laughs> even ethnicities. Right. You mm -hmm. see white people playing Asian. You see mm -hmm. white people playing black. Mm -hmm. Robert Downey Jr. You see, <laughs> you <laughs> know, you know what I'm saying. Right. So you see a lot of different people playing other things, and I'm glad that society is finally getting, or the ho not society, but Hollywood is getting to the point where they realize that's offensive. Like, right. let people be who they are and let the people that live in that lane play that lane. And represent as, that lane. Right, exactly. as opposed to somebody else doing that. Right. You know well, I mean? and, you know, especially, you know, I've never been someone who, I think that it's great when people are playing LGBTQ roles or a special, ex I should say, gay males, mm -hmm. straight men playing gay roles. Like, that's been, like, if Tom Hanks was not in Philadelphia, would I have gotten to see Philadelphia when I was a kid? That was a time when it had to happen, you know? Yeah. Yes. And and that's actually a good point. I, I think that the that, that, that things have changed, and that the the entire industry is changing, especially around um, gay men and, and women characters specifically, like not trans characters. Like we we know that that's trans people have to be playing trans characters. Absolutely. But I think that with um, gay men and and women, it is a conversation that we're kind of having. And as someone who has almost exclusively played gay characters, and I almost always only audition for gay characters. Hmm. Um, I think it's, I love playing gay characters. What I would hope is that the roles that are really amazing, that are winning Oscars for <laughs> so many, I think there was like maybe wink, wink. <laughs> 30 to 40% of the the acting uh, roles that were nominated for Oscars this year were, were characters that were gay in the stories and none of them were played by gay people no yeah. they weren't and i think no is... one thinks about it but it, it's 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 i think it's great that the, those people are are telling those stories and i think that's what the priority has been for all of us let's get those stories told but now i think that the fact that we're not looking at all gay actors to have those amazing stories be the people who are telling those stories i think it's time to have that conversation and it's for sure. i think so important especially for people growing up like as a queer woman myself like seeing queer people play queer characters like just having that sort of role model in a way is so important and so beautiful and i want to know what the response to you has been for this character because i imagine it's been i don't know whenever something strikes a chord with someone especially if it's like someone who looks like you someone you can relate to right. especially in this like really interesting space and like you said humanizing space i want to know you know have people come up to you and like yes. thank you for this yeah i think that it, it has been you know it, it was a surprising thing for me to get scripts and and see that i was going to have a love story 
I, I just didn't mm. expect that. I mean, I'm, I, I, it, it kind of took my breath away, and I was so excited that that was happening. And now to show the world that and have so many of my gay friends say, I can't believe that you got to go on that journey, that we got to see that journey, because representation matters. Yes, it does. It matters so much, you know, and I love Will and Grace and those shows <laughs> that were yeah, so like, important yes, to me then. It's yes, it's hard to leave, it, it's hard to leave. <laughs> it, it matters, it really does. And, you know, I, I think that this show is representing so many different groups of people and parts of society and nerd culture and and just like these awesome groups of people that do not get to have a voice very often on TV. I didn't 100%. realize that the scripts came piece by piece. I thought you saw them all. So that's really interesting to learn. You had no idea your you, character was developing that way. And everyone's like, we got the email. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're just would, in the dark. You don't know set. where this show is going. No, wow. It's like, yeah. it's like getting uh, an episode every week, just like watching it, but I'm getting it in my inbox and in my email and devouring it to find out what's gonna happen. Of course, you know, I remember hearing from one of the writers, like, I think it was while we were filming the pilot, like, just wait till we see what we make you do in episode three. <laughs> and that was what the mud and the, you know, trying to like, I mean, can you swear on this? I don't. Yes. When I shit my pants. Um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, like, I was like, what's going to happen? You know, so I was kind of relieved when I was just shitting though. my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, pure comedy. I yeah. cannot even. That yeah. is so funny. So we know that you come from a Broadway, bra Broadway background, right. which is, you know, probably good. The fact that, you know, did the Shakespeare and everything. Yeah. So you were classically trained at the Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. and made your way to Broadway. Thank you, Zap. <laughs> Thank That's you, right. Um, and you did uh, Book of Mormon. That's right. And you did Hamilton. Mm -hmm. What's Hamilton? <laughs> what? Oh my God, what is that show? Oh, yeah. huh. I was is actually in a cab. A cab. It was, it was, it was, I was in a cab, and I think it was from Newark. To, into the city and a guy was like what, what are you going to the city for I was like oh I'm I was out of town but I'm going back to work and he was like what are you, what are you doing and I was like oh I'm I, I'm in a show Hamilton and he was like oh is that the one about the guys from Jersey <laughs> Jersey boys wow. no it's no. not but like, cool. I was like I love you because you will not be asking me for, for house seats <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, did you get like hit up by anybody and everybody that you ever knew in your life? I did, I did, and and, and you know, like I was the one. Uh, uh, we talked about this before that I went to college uh, with Leslie Odom Jr. Mm -hmm. So I was the one begging him when it was off Broadway. He got me on a waiting list, and I was like dying to see it when it was off Broadway, and I, he got me in. So when I had the privilege of being a part of the greatest thing that's ever happened to to Broadway, Broadway. Mm -hmm. I felt this tremendous responsibility that I was able to have access to give tickets to people who were dying to see it. And, you know, it, it becomes your part-time job. I know. I was in The Lion King when it opened in Los Angeles, so I feel, I yeah. feel your pain. That's yeah. awesome. It was a hot yeah. mess. Um, so having said that, are there any elements of King George that you brought to Brian on American Princess? Yes. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no way that I would have been able to um, bring on the confidence or at least the fake confidence that Brian has walking through the fair because I always say, like, you know, I'm just a guy from the Midwest. Like, you were told us kind of, like, keep a low profile. Don't brag about yourself. And, and I was worried in playing King George, will I be able to walk out on a Broadway stage with – Lynn manuel Miranda and all of these amazing performers who have been owning, I came into the show about eight months into the run mm -hmm. with the entire original cast when it was on Broadway. And so I was, I was scared, you know, like I, w I knew I could sing the song, but could I really inhabit this king who felt he was, who just knew <laughs> he was better than everyone else. And I truly felt that learning how to walk on a stage as King George III is the first time a character kind of changed me, changed mm. my DNA, because I had to find it in myself to say that I could own that space mm. in that way. Yes. My husband probably thinks it's changed me too much. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, it definitely is a, a, the reason I was able to play Brian and have that kind of confidence and you know that air about himself. 
um, you know, which is so fun because then it gets cracked and, and you see behind. behind I that wonder mask. that with characters. If I, I just think if it were me and I was playing a character for so long, I, I guess you really have to know yourself as a person because I do think there's a part of me that could start morphing into that character a little bit and maybe yeah. not always for a good thing. But do you feel like you really do have to know who you are to be able to separate yourself at the end of the day and turn that person off? I think that it's it's mostly important depending on the material. Like when I was doing the Book of Mormon, it was such a joyous fun comedy that I didn't feel like I had to like put it away you know but there are moments you know like when you're doing Hamilton even though I was the com the comedic relief in that show it is heavy you know so a three-hour show about you know America you know especially when we're doing that show in 2016 okay. during that election every day <laughs> the weight of what that show meant was so much to carry around I remember, you know, after the election, I said, God, I just want to do Hello, Dolly tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we just take a break from freedom? What's your go-to, um, <laughs> like, cheer you up? What's your, like, guilty pleasure when you just need that comedic uh, relief? Well, my husband is going to be very proud that I'm admitting this. Um, but we I am, give a secret. I'm See? a housewife fan and I have I have really been watching a lot of the New York Housewives. <laughs> um, I love that. I, I just like I have been like the last few months. Like I watched the New York Housewives. Okay, I'm coming out <laughs> like, okay. here I'm coming on out. breaking <laughs> news. Breaking news like, Christmas I, release. <laughs> I have feelings. Like it's funny because my, my my husband and I used to like get in fights and I would be like, I don't think this is right and you know I and I you know there's certain things that I don't but especially with, with like those ladies, I can see that they are very much in the driver's seat of what they're doing mm -hmm. and putting out there, and I, I'm all in. <laughs> it's only a guilty pleasure if you feel guilty about it. That's you know? true. There you go. That's true. Somebody <laughs> said that to me once about something that I liked. I was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a question from Ooh, yeah. someone oh. in the live chat okay. um, from Kimmy. Thank you for being out there and asking questions. Um, she asked, how did Rory prepare to read Shakespeare readings? Ah, um, you know, I, I, it's funny. I started in theater with a, a lot of Shakespeare. Like, it was just what kind of got me into all of it. And I don't know if it was because I thought that's where I had to start, but growing up, um, you know, I also had, like, a lot of good Shakespeare teachers. I had... Um, uh, Mr. Cooper in seventh grade. I love who that you, I had love us, that you remember his name. I, I mean, he had us uh, memorize a, a speech from the Scottish play, which I won't say the title yeah, of. Yeah, no, you can't do that. Um, <laughs> can't do that. But, you know, like, I remember that that was something we did in seventh grade. And, you know, it was, it was a dagger I see before me. That speech, I can't do it right now, so don't ask me to. But I, re I could piece it together, you know? I remember that um, my, my high school teacher, Rich Fujimoto, uh, you know, was our drama teacher and also English teacher, and you know we had to read all of, all of Shakespeare, and also uh, uh, Mr. Kyle, who was the the, Sha the Shakespeare specifically teacher at at Saint Ignatius All Boys High School, which was the number one football school in oh, wow. Cleveland. I was not on the team, <laughs> um, but I was in all the 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 plays. And Mr. Kyle wasn't just the Shakespeare teacher; he was also. Uh, the coach of the football team. Wow. So all the guys in the class cool. were on the football team, right? Because they hilarious. wanted to take coach's class. But he, coach would always let me read Romeo. Or he would let me read, you know, while we were all reading out loud in class. And I felt like it was, he was like, this guy, listen to him Aww. do this. And for me, that was such an incredible thing to be in front of the football team, knowing this is the only way these guys are ever going to respect me. Is if coach, you know, gives you know, throws me you know, a little moment. Yeah. And did they respect yeah. you? Well, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I. You know what's funny is that I had such a great time in high school. I had a very good experience there, and a lot of the guys just were like. Man, I can't believe because we were an all boys high school. Mm. All the girls from the all girls high mm -hmm. school had to come to be in our plays. Oh. So they were like, "Man, I can't believe you're with all these girls all the time. Like, how do you do it?" I'm like, "I don't know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard when we're doing the shapoopy that you know keep my focus. You know." 
I um, wanted to ask you about <laughs> your chemistry with Shauna. Uh, we loved watching you two together. Yes. Isn't loved she a it, dream? loved it, loved it. And I loved especially when y'all would break into song yeah. and have those scenes. How much yeah. fun did you have doing that? The best. Oh my god. It seemed like it was natural, like you guys were just friends singing, like it didn't even seem like a rehearsed we, thing at yeah, all. We, we had never met. We had never met before we started working on this. And you've met her. She mm -hmm. is such a wonderful human being. She's lovely. I have so much respect for her as um as, as an actress, but also as a person. And you know, she's a mom and she's just I have just really love her career and the kind of things she's chosen and who she is and and I, coming from the theater there, I don't know, they're like camera left, camera right. I'm like, where, why, <laughs> where's backstage? You know, like, where's backstage? You know, like, where's stage left, where's yeah, stage right? Yeah, and she just, she held my hand through that and answered every question I had and let me keep my dignity and was just always, she was just so good to so me. So this was your first TV gig? It wasn't my first TV gig. I did a, I did um, a show with, uh, Kelsey Grammer and Martin Lawrence on FX called Partners. We did 10 episodes. Oh, yeah. I, I remember that yeah, show. Yeah, I was their sassy gay assistant. <laughs> I had a lot of great bow ties. And I had the best time doing it. But it was a multicam, so it was a lot closer to theater. Theater, yeah. And so I've done single cam. I've done this kind of thing where it's more like a film. But this was huge. Our first day of filming, there was a crane. You know, I just was not... I was not experienced in this world for such a long period of time. Mm. And uh, I really followed the the lead of of Shauna and, and um, the rest of our cast who are just so lovely. When did you first meet her? Did you guys have like a chemistry read or was it like the first day of, of filming? First day wow. of a table read. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that's how we met. And um, it might've been like a, going to like do costume fittings or something, but she's she's the best and um we connected immediately and it's also one of those things where it's like you know you have to right so it's like we're gonna be very close all summer we're gonna work on something that means a lot to us and we're both so grateful and that's all it takes really for me with another artist if they're grateful to come to the table that we're sitting then at good. then i'm good like let's let's play let's have fun because you know if you're with somebody who's not grateful then it's you're not like, so lovely it's not well it's that not. spoke volumes about your character too when you said earlier you only expected to have about a dozen lines and thankfully it developed into so much more for you but you were just as excited thinking that was yeah. going to be it for you yeah no it was i think for all of us that we realized very quickly that we were a part of uh of a show that had a writing team and producers that were creating an ecosystem and a world and it's just like i said before like i knew that we were going to get there i just couldn't believe how well it was done so mm -hmm. quickly but you remember that when you watch the first episode of orange is the new black and you watch the lead character going to prison, you think that there are just a bunch of background actors around her. No, and by the sir. end of that season, you are in love with every single person she passes by in that first episode. Mm -hmm. So you think about those women who signed on to a show where they walk by the lead character, you know, Very and all true. of a sudden they have these long arcs that have been going on for seven seasons. So you kind of just have to trust the creatives that you've signed on to and with these folks, I mean, you can't you can't go wrong. And Absolutely. I'm so proud of the ten episodes that we've created in this this first season. Well, we love y'all. We love y'all. I want to talk a little bit about your podcast. Oh yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, your Geff and Playhouse podcast. Yeah. So tell our listeners and viewers what that's all about. Um, I host a podcast called the Geffen Playhouse Unscripted. Ooh. No scripts allowed. <laughs> <Throw those out. laughs> um, it's it's uh it's a podcast one. Uh, podcast and it's funny because I started a podcast on my own as you have to do in Los Angeles you if you move to LA you have to have your own mm -hmm. podcast <laughs> and um, I I started one when I was working on Hamilton because social media is fantastic but when we had so many young people who who loved Hamilton but were only seeing what it's like to be a part of a Broadway experience in 140 characters on Twitter or on an Instagram post and you know here we are with whatever celebrity right. is backstage you start to meet them and they say I want to be on Broadway I want to be a musical theater performer and 
I have to be honest, my first reaction is, no, <laughs> no. don't. You want to do don't. the main show of the week? Yes, and, and like, if you do, great, but please know what it's really like. You are seeing a curated version of, of what it is to be an actor. So I, I love podcasts and I love long form interviews and I kept wanting certain people who had podcasts to be talking to you know, the, the people on Broadway who I think so highly of. So I just started doing it on my own. And I had a podcast called Live in the Dream, and it was just about the ups and downs of our business. And I thought this is a way to, to talk to younger people about what it takes. Mm -hmm. And I uh, did an ep a podcast episode of the Geffen Playhouse last year when I was doing a voter registration drive and trying to get people, everyone, everyone to register to vote. And uh, Gil Cates Jr., who is, is the head of the Geffen Playhouse, had me on the podcast, and he was hosting it. And he said, yeah, we kind of have a revolving hosts. And, and I said, oh, well, let me know if you ever need somebody. And he was like, well, what about next month? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I guess that's what I do now. I do your podcast. And it's been great because, you know, I was able to kind of fail and figure out how to do it on my own first, and now I can do it with the Geffen. And they have amazing shows that are happening here in Los Angeles at the Geffen Playhouse. And they also have a, a reach and a, and a name that I can talk to so many different people in the Broadway community. So it's been a really great collaboration. What was the craziest day? Because I know y'all shot in the Simi Valley. Yes. American Princess. What was the craziest day you had on set? Um, there was a day where uh, there were a lot of crazy days for crazy sure. people there. For but, but I'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All fun that a guy will not reveal. But there was a, a day where um, I think it was 115 degrees uh -huh. and I was filming a scene at night and I was like well at least I'm coming at night so it'll cool down night I showed the up desert. the sun was down and it was a hundred and five degrees oh, when I got there wow. at night so you can only imagine the poor folks who had been filming all day long well I got to to on set gone through makeup got on set and there was like some kind of crazy windstorm that probably had to do with the heat and I don't know, I don't, I don't know, a weatherman. And I can't they, they like all the lighting came, like came down oh, in this one area gosh. and they were like, everyone evacuate. I was like, is this Bye. a tornado? Am I back in Ohio? What's going on? <laughs> and so we had to film that one outdoor scene like a month later indoors and like it was crazy. The weather there was pretty intense. Um, but it's one of the reasons that we all bonded so much because we had to kind of make the most out of crazy situations and and you know we just became so grateful for the AC inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of gratitude. And not to mention being in those heavy costumes like that can't yeah. make it any easier for you. It wasn't and you know a lot of people would say oh, I'm so sorry you know you're in that that heavy costume and I was like look you're used I am to so it. white that that's, I know I bring this up a lot, but I'm serious. Like doing a show outside is my personal nightmare. If I was in a t-shirt, I could never be, like I love swimming, but I could never be a lifeguard because I would have fried when I was a kid. So I was just so glad that my body was covered up. Oh, and well, I that's a way to look at it. I would go in a makeup chair and we would just spend the first 15 minutes applying sunscreen. Oh. <laughs> That's the truth, you know. I mean, that you got to take care of it. Yeah. So yeah, yes. exactly. I mean, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Especially these the summer heat in LA. Yes. I mean, you have to reapply. Turn, don't burn. That's my motto <laughs> for the beach. I burn so easily. So, she said, turn, turn don't, don't burn. burn. That is key. If you haven't learned anything else tonight, remember yeah. that. I love turn, it. Don't burn. I oh my god. But you have been talking. You are quite the self starter. I have to say, and. You um, organized, co-founded Broadway Impact in 2009, 2009, which is a gay rights activist group. So who, long ago, my God. I, I, mean, it's it, I mean, I can't believe it was 10 years ago, but yeah. That That's is crazy. a weird feeling. And you've done huge things, um, organize rallies in New York, take buses to Washington, D.C. Are you still a huge part of this organization today? It's been 10 years. Well, you know, we started that organization with Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, which is to me is the greatest nonprofit in the entire world because it brings artists all across the country together to do their art form and, and bring together money for causes. They're phenomenal. And if you don't know who Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS is, 
Google them and donate today. But we were a part of, of their organization. I ba we basically, um, it was back in 2008 when Barack Obama was elected president, but Prop 8 was passed in California. And it was this crazy time when something that nobody thought was possible happened. And it was amazing because we all worked towards it. But then also marriage wasn't possible for gay people in California anymore and it was a really defeating time and the Broadway community came together and said let's do something positive about it so I got together with my friends Gavin Creel and our very good friend Jenny Canellos and we organized the community to do letter writing campaigns and then that turned into a uh, bus drives and it turned into doing rallies in Times Square where we we're just gonna have the cast of hair singing and all of a sudden Cynthia Nixon announced that she was getting engaged there to to um, her wife, and uh, the the mayor asked if he could come, then the governor wow. asked if he could come. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, this thing it turned into a thing, huge thing. Mm. And you know that was social media. That really wasn't those were the, that I, I joined Facebook for this group. I didn't. I was not gonna do it. I was gonna be above <laughs> all this stuff. You, know? you were over it. You're yes, like, I'm over be that, and I'm above that. the housewives. You know, like, that, was, <laughs> that was me in 2009. But I, but we really were able to organize the community, and our goal was only to organize for marriage equality for for gay people, and um, we were so lucky to be a part of that movement, and now we have it. So for us, we didn't want to continue trying to figure out a reason for, to exist and keep taking money in. We said we will start another organization. We will find a new new cause when we need to, and then. Last year, we decided that it was time to get everyone in the theater community registered to vote. So we did a social media campaign called Hashtag Belt the Vote. And not just, rock, we don't rock the vote on Broadway, we belt, belt it. it. Yeah, like it. <laughs> so we, we did that all last year before the election and uh, we participated with an organization that Michelle Obama started called When We All Vote. Lynn manuel Miranda was a part of it. We collaborated with them and, and with Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS once again. And uh, it was fantastic. And it, it's just so important, I think, that when you are part of a community, and I am a part of the Broadway theater community, that you make change and you keep moving the ball forward. And now I feel that the gay community has gotten s so much in the last 10 years. And now it's so important that we continue working on that, but take the lessons we've learned and, and help women and help uh, uh, the, the trans community. And uh, it's 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 not time to l lay back, you know. I'm I'm married to my husband now, you know. I'm so happy, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's time to to keep paying that forward because there were so many people who helped me to get to that point. People in the chat room want to know where can we find the podcast, the Geffen Playhouse podcast. Um, you can go. Uh, it, it's anywhere where podcasts are found. So if you go to iTunes, Ge Spotify. yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you go to Geffen Playhouse <laughs> Unscripted, mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm the host for the last year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about being a dad. Sure. Being a yeah. dad and navigating all the challenges that come with being an actor, especially a Broadway actor, because, you know, you do eight shows a week, right. five show weekends sometimes, you know. What is that like for you and your husband to navigate your schedules and having a child? Especially a baby almost. Oh, eight months, yeah, right? Eight months. I imagine oh, the yeah. lullabies are more exciting than this. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Can you imagine it's like, Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I was, I was saying. I think before we started that we think that he's really into Whitney Houston, and he's like, we played Baby Shark, and he's like, he was having none of it. But Whitney, he loves. So we're very proud. You're passing it um, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it, 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 it is. First and foremost, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I, we are, so, so happy. We, we. Um, we adopted and we were in the process for years and so it was a lot of ups and downs in itself and so the fact that we're finally um, getting to experience parenthood with this lovely cute cute sweet sweet little boy um, it's just a gift so every day is amazing even last night when I had to be up three times in the middle of the night um, you you it's funny you like you you hear about that before you have a kid and you're like I don't know you know like you think I could do that and then when it's your kid there's like two cries from the other room and you're like 
ready to go, ready to be like, what do you need? I get the bottle, I get, you know, it's like adrenaline rush. So um, you're tired after the fact, but during, it's it's just a privilege to get to, to be there for this other human being. Um, but it's, we haven't had to face the HO week schedule, but I'm very scared about it because I'm sure that I'll be a part of a show again doing eight times a week. And it's another reason that I started that podcast because if you'll notice, <laughs> I talk to a lot of parents. I say, how do you do this? <laughs> Can you tell me? So and asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally have hundreds of episodes of me just talking to performers and parents and saying, how do you do this? How do you make this balance between what we do and, and parenthood? So I just go back and I'll listen to different episodes. <laughs> I, I, mean, love that. I think, you know, I think um, Stephanie J. Block had something about oh, this. Wow. I'm going to look at this. You'll hilarious. be able to write yeah. a book after this, after all the advice that you're yes. giving. Yes. Good idea. Yeah. 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 I did, but what, one other thing I want to ask you too is is there a piece of advice that your parents probably, <laughs> something that your parents said to you, like, wait till you have one? Oh. One of those things about you that they like, wait till you have one. The anxiety <laughs> of me just being like, can you just chill out? You know, like, <laughs> leave me alone. Everything's going to be fine. And now I'm just watching. He's starting to eat solid foods. I watch every bite <laughs> with an anticipation I that I'm, I am trying to hide it. I really am. And my husband comes from like a big family with babies, so he's just like, hey, let's get it. He doesn't care. I am in a panic. And I'm trying to play it cool, but it's not working out. But, you know, my my family has, is so supportive and, and, you know, has been amazing. But, you know, my mom's got a lot of anxiety, and I, I get it now. For sure. <laughs> well, child, that is our time. This flew by, didn't yeah. it? I know. We had so much we all wanted to ask you. I know. Oh. I know. Um, where can tell everybody that's listening where we can find you on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you are, so that fans of the show, American Princess, yeah. and people here at After Buzz that are fans can find you online? I am on Twitter at Rory O'Malley, and I am on Instagram at Mr. Rory O'Malley, oh, which are no. more no. I take it very seriously. No, it's just what was available. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, the podcast, Geffen Playhouse Unscripted, you can find wherever you listen to podcasts. And then on Facebook uh, at Rory O'Malley. And and American Princess, you can find um, on, on iTunes, Lifetime. Lifetime. Stream it. Stream mm -hmm. it. Um, please watch it and tell everyone you know. Yay! And Thank where can we you. find you, ladies? Taylor? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at alphabet underscore Anne. Very appropriate for this musical theater theme episode today. And you yes. can find me on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at HeyJ, H-A-Y-J underscore. Guys, you can find me at Instagram and Twitter at at Kels Hightower. And you can find me, y'all, you know the drill. At The Curvy Critic across all social media platforms. You can find me at 5 o'clock at BHL doing The Curvy Critic with Carla Renata where I talk about all things movies behind and in front of the lens. And you can also catch me right back here at After Buzz doing the General Hospital After Show. So until the next time, we will have the showrunner, Miss Jamie Denbo, Woo! in the house. Woo! But we want to thank Mr. Rory O'Malley for joining us today. Huzzah! 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 And until the next time, ready? Huzzah! Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.